that first hunt, I remember, gosh, we uh, we had a great group. Remember everybody that was with us? We yeah, had everyone was there. We had Brian Call. We, ha we had Brian. We had, we had James Sylvester on that one. Yeah, we along. had you, Mom, me, Brian. That was about it. Yeah, James. That was a big group. Um, but Brian and I had already tagged out at that point. And we had seen a couple of good bucks in this area. And so, um, you know, had a kind of an idea of what we were going for. But that first day out, you know, we, we pick up this buck on a ridge. He's just silhouetted. He's got a doe in front of him. This just nice three point, you know, he's, he's not a young buck and he's not a, a real huge buck at this point. He's a good buck. Uh, no idea how old he was at that point, but he was, he was solid and is one of those things. It's like first day. Do we try to go for something first day? We hadn't even got to our camp spot yet. We were basically hiking in and, um, we made a, a decent stock on him. Light was starting to fade. Uh, we got in and he ended up slipping over the ridge. You know, the last we saw of this buck, he just kind of moved up and over the ridge and we got to see that that backside shot of him. Um, but actually before that, before we got to that buck, another buck came in. Yep. Well, two point came in. I think it was a two or two by three or something like that. A young buck, which again, it was first day, but we gave her the option of whether she wanted to take it or not. I remember Hillary was standing there. We got you set up on the rifle. Uh, you got it in a scope. And it was kind of like one of those, nah, it doesn't really excite me. And then he came really close and then it was like, yeah, he's, yeah, I think I'm going to take this one. And then it was, no, mm, this isn't the one. So passed on a deer first day out. And then after that, we went up and, and, uh, got in tight on that, the big three and didn't end up getting him. But we had quite a few days after that. Found several other bucks, had another couple few stocks. I think the day we ended up finding her really nice old troll, this was an old buck. You know, he, he's got nice kind of regressed antlers. He's got that look, old sway back. And this was a buck I had seen prior as well. And he, even the year before I'd seen him, he was pushing every other buck out of the county. Um, but in the end, on that first hunt, you know, we got in tight and it just so happens we got right to 200 yards, worked around the sandstone. Uh, do you remember that whole experience? Maybe you could describe it. I mean, I remember getting to this giant sandstone thing and then just kind of sitting there for like a minute while you like looked at him, kind of glassed at him for a little bit. And then we ran around, we, we set up. And I just remember everyone sitting in like this group and we were all just waiting for the deer to like stand up. It was so cold and it was so windy. And on these sandstone things, there's like, there's like the dirt in front of it. So it's just dirt and wind blowing into your face. It was sand blasting us in sand, the face. Sand, dirt, whatever. And yeah. it's just an hour and a half of cold wind and sand just blowing in your face. Yeah, so that if you was, remember, that was miserable. So we had talked about the setup we were hoping for: two hundred yards and in, a broadside shot. You know, standing. Um, you want to make sure that your kid has, especially on that first one, every opportunity. You know, the the largest target. The you know the lungs expanded, um, and so we decided. You know, we got to two hundred yards. She probably could have made that shot, but we, we ended up saying, no, we're going to wait this out and let that buck stand up on his own. So we kind of slid out from that sandstone, got set up, and we ended up sitting there for an hour and a half. And we tried getting her warm with the clothes. We put every puffy jacket we could on her, but that wind was relentless. Everybody was frozen. She was turning purple. And, uh, and then she ended up she was shaking so bad we had to kind of you like I, you like football rolled right out of there. I here. rolled and then I was I had gotten to um, my mom and 
Brian was like filming the thing, so he was like, oh my gosh, he just got up. I'm like, no way. I just rolled over here. I am half numb. And this is when the deer finally decides to stand up. So I rolled back and then I took the shot. Yes, like, you rolled back and just that buck stood up. He was cold too. You can see it. He's kind of like stretching. His muscles are tight. So he stands there for a little bit. You can especially see it in his back legs. And, uh, he's not ready to run or anything. He knows something's up at this point. I think he saw the, the barrel roll out of there and he just saw something that wasn't ordinary. You know, I got the glass on him. She squeezed on the trigger and put the perfect shot on this buck. And he ran just a little ways up and he fell over. And we did it. We accomplished what we absolutely wanted to with that first hunt. I felt like it couldn't have gone better because it was pretty hard. It was cold, number one. Not an easy one. We spent, I don't know how many stocks we got that we failed on that just something didn't go right. You know, wind switched or buck got up for whatever reason, didn't have the angle, couldn't get close enough, all those type things, which was perfect. That was how it should have been. I would have been, you know, that first hunt would have been nothing even close to what it was if we would have shot that big three on that first evening of the hunt. We would have missed so much. Uh, we had a lot of laughs after that. She got to learn a lot more. Uh, my wife got to see a lot more as to what we do out there, you know, on the stocks and everything and some of the conditions that were put through. And then we got that perfect night hike out, which was yeah. awesome. That's, that's how you always want to start your kid off is with a nice cold weather, November night hike. Yeah. I was exhausted. <laughs> yeah. So my wife, Hill, she about passed out at some point. I don't think she had eaten or drinking enough that day. And uh, everybody was exhausted. We got back. I don't even know what time it was that night. But um, all in all, it was an incredible first hunt. I don't think it could have ever gone better. And, uh, you know, every so often I'll go back and I'll watch that um, hunt that Brian edited and put together for us. And um, still going to be probably my favorite all time just watching how everything worked out. She was with us, you know, my wife was with us. And um, in the end, Paley took a really good stud buck. And that was the first of this three-part saga, three-year saga, in trying to find the, th the big three that we just put out this last um, weekend. After that, we rolled into year two, which, uh, you know, in the off season, now that we had been able to go back and rewatch all the, the film from that first hunt of hers, uh, there was a lot of talk of trying to relocate that big three, relocate that first deer. And um, we didn't know if he was alive. You just never know, you know, in these areas, you know, did the coyotes get him? Did another hunter get him? Did the winner take him? Whatever, anything could happen. But the plan was to go out and try to find this, this big three. And, uh, and we did, we actually went out there. Uh, this was year, year two and we saw quite a few bucks on that trip. A lot of young bucks. Yeah. Paley was extremely snobby and picky in passing all these young bucks. Um, Brad was with us on this hunt and as we're out bombing around looking in the same area that, for the big three, Brad actually found one of his sheds. And so you'll see in that second film of hers that she's packing around this big three-point shed of his. And man, it was like just cookie cutter to the year before, you know, when, when we had seen him silhouetted on that, that ridge line. Um, it's, just, it's just a really cool buck. This buck was never going to do anything more. He was never going to sprout a fourth time. That's just what he was. He was a three-point till the end. Um, and so... We, uh, Hill was with us again. This was year two in a row that we had Hill on the trip with us. Yep. Uh, do you remember what the weather was like? Do you, what do you remember? I remember the weather actually being pretty good on that hunt. Mm -hmm. We had cold spells with some decent wind, but all in all, it wasn't bad. You know, it wasn't like we were swimming in snow on this one and, 
um, minus temps or even single digits. There really wasn't much snow on the second one. I remember the last day hiking out, it was sunny yeah. and warm. Yeah, we had like um, temps in the 20s, 30s, even 40s at the end there. And so that was a that was a big change. That's something we don't typically experience on those late November hunts. But um, do you remember how it went down? Because I remember the day that we ended up getting your second buck, we were way high. We were looking. We had caught a glimpse of the big three. And we thought he was over in this area. And so we went over and we perched up and we sat there. And I kind of like took these little mini missions away from our little setup perch because we had several bucks come in that you passed on. And, um, you know, it's funny because every time a buck comes in, I want you to get your optics on there. I want you to put the crosshairs on it. Not necessarily to shoot, just get the work, get the, get the practice on, you know, uh, that was one of the, that was one of the things, you know, target acquisition as a new hunter. That's one of the most difficult challenges that they have. And that's getting the animal in the scope. And so, um, I try to do that as much as I possibly could is every animal that came by every buck that we saw, even though we knew we weren't going to take it, having your son or daughter just get it in the scope maybe don't even have anything in the chamber but just get it in the scope as quick as possible and then dial it in you know and that's another skill that i think a lot of experienced hunters kind of lose track of they just kind of forget about it second nature but um that's it's definitely something that's it was tough on the front end there's a lot of times where it's like i can't get it in the scope i can't find it and you know and then it didn't take too long and with all her practice she was figuring it out and able to find the deer, find the animal really fast. But so that one, totally different setup. We took that hunt down to the very last day. Uh, you guys had to be out of there that next morning early. We didn't have time to hunt that next day. It was, it was go time and we took it down to the wire. And from, I don't know how far it was, it was a long ways off that we glassed up a buck in the evening and we made a run for it. We ran over like porcupines. I mean, we ran down this trench so fast. I remember mom wasn't too happy with me at that point. She was a little yeah. upset because there was no breaks, but it was like no time to waste at all. We were just bugging. And um, we got set up in the area we last saw that buck. You remember that? Like, we were fully expecting for that buck to come out of that juniper. I remember before it, because we, so when we were hiking down, like, down this little, like, thing in between hills, we were hiking down, like, some little game trail in between it, and the deer that I actually shot came running in between all of us. It came running down this hill across the trail right in front of us and up the other hill so it went over here and this is where we had shot it after but we went down and then we had just sat on, the, on this little grassy patch for a while because we thought that the big three was over over there and we were just waiting for him to come out and i'm like we'd probably sat there for like I what you and mom saw a buck that we didn't even see Oh, you guys didn't even see it. That was the no. buck I had shot. Yeah, the we buck, were we I, were looking at something else, and as we were going, you and Mom saw that buck. Yeah, you guys were in front of us. Yeah, but we ended up setting up on what we thought was the big buck, and I think we sat there for probably 45 minutes, thinking this is our last chance. We're all in. We're all in on this one. And I'm like... He's going to get out of that juniper, and we're going to have a nice close shot, but it didn't happen. And I'm like, he's not here. Yeah. <laughs> like... We're just sitting here staring at nothing. Like, yeah, there was nothing in there. So we walked away feeling defeated. Then there was the other buck. Yeah, we started moving up. You know, we're, we're getting low on shooting light. Um, we only had like 20 minutes left of shooting. And uh, yeah, we're, we're bombing up the way we had come. And there had been a lot of action down there. There had been a lot of movement, a lot of deer. And uh, I look up to my left and there's that buck probably the same buck that hill and paley had seen and he was just standing there all majestic looking and um like it was meant to be and so you know we kind of just 
got Paley into position and 300 yard shot, you know, this is year two. It's not the closest shot in the world. And the darn thing wasn't standing perfectly broadside like the year before. So it was kind of a question mark, but again, in the off season, so much time spent watching her shoot that my confidence was sky high that she could make this shot. Um, I think you had some nerves on that one for sure, because it was kind of a quick rushed thing. You know, we didn't know how long he's going to stand there. We are running low on, on uh, shooting hours and this was our very last day. And just 10 minutes before we found this buck, she was pretty convinced that we were going home empty on this one. I was so sad. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to go home. I, like, we had been there for, like, what, five days? Yeah. And the cold winds, all, all these stalks, and then to go home empty-handed, just I just felt yeah. defeated. Yeah. And then we got the buck. And then, yeah, she put a perfect shot. Now, this buck was another one of those things where I'm pretty sure I remember telling you, like, shoot it in the middle because how he was standing, he was court, sharp quarter to us. But we went out from our angle, I could see like right in the middle, that's going to be, that's going to be pushing right through the, through the good stuff on that deer. And that's what she did. Um, it, I don't know if it was the best trigger squeeze in the world, but it went exactly where she wanted it to. Uh, I don't, it, I don't remember the trigger squeeze. And it pancaked that deer so fast. And, uh, I think everybody, I know I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. Like we just accomplished everything on this very last few minutes of I just shooting light on I the just last remember day. the shot it was like we had set up and then I was I was kind of nervy about it like he said and well I shot it and it was weird it was like I this memory that I have when I shot it I see it through the scope and it's like its ears went forward and it just fell down but in my head it goes into like slow motion so it's like I shoot I can see the barrel, like the gunfire going off, and I can see the deer falling. Like I have that memory, even though, of course, it wasn't in slow motion. But like, that's how the memory replays in my head. Hmm. You know. Yeah, the bottom just dropped right out of this thing, and he was dead. <laughs> it was like so fast, and uh, yeah, then we got to go up and get our hands on that buck. And you know, if you've seen the film, you'll notice that was a mature buck, but. This was, this was, uh, we were kind of going through a drought at that time. So we were starting to see a lot of deer with, they were still hanging on to velvet and some of them weren't rutting. Some of them had low testosterone. They needed some TRT is what they needed because, uh, that buck that she took had nice bases on it. You know, it was a, it was a mature buck, but his testes were sucked in. Uh, his points on his antlers were needle sharp. I've never... I've still never put my finger on an antler tip that was as sharp as that one was. Every tip was sharp. He wasn't rubbing on anything. He wasn't rutting. He had no swollen neck. And this is, mind you, what, November 15th through the 20th, maybe the yeah. 20th, into the 20s. So he should have been full rut, but this buck had, didn't have does on the brain. He just, uh, he just didn't have it in him. So, um, yeah, I thought it was a it was a good win for us to take that buck out of there. I don't know if he would have made it another year. Not sure. That was those were the drought years that were that were really um, doing a number on the on the deer in that area. So, and then that was an accomplishment. And then we rolled into year three. Yep. And year three, what happened? We. Uh, Again, a lot yeah. of chatter about this big three that we never ended up getting the first two years. A lot of chatter. Yep. And what people didn't see is I was over in this area a week prior to Paley getting there. You know, we got to play it right with school and all that kind of stuff and not skip too many days. Even though I think hunting days are far more valuable than school days these days. I think you I learn only, more. I'm pretty sure I only missed like a day of school. Yeah, usually every hunt season we get her two days, um, two days out of school. They don't have school on Friday, so. Um, so yeah, I had seen this buck. I was up there with a buddy of mine and uh, helped him get a buck. And then, um, man, I laid eyes on this thing 
briefly in the snow. It was, we were swimming in minus temps. It was minus 20. We had days where, um, man, I mean, the ripping wind was just intense. It was a storm. It was a gnarly storm. And I was really worried about her showing up um, during this time because it was nasty. I mean, it would make a grown man cry, and I'm sure it did. A lot of, I know a lot of people in that area probably felt that one. But I did pick up the buck. I did lay eyes on it, and so I knew. So I let them know, messaged them that we got him. He's still alive. So that was, uh, that was encouraging. So she had all her heart set on finding that one again. And so when um, I came home, ended up bringing you back over there and it was uh, the game was on went for the big three and uh, that's what you guys saw in this last film was us going out there trying to find this this old buck and yeah we I, you could say we were lured away at one point by another nice four point but at that point we couldn't find him we hadn't found this buck yet you know so there was a there was a moment there where it's like well you know, bird in the hand, we've got this buck that's just right over here. Should we go for it? And we decided to go for it. And thankfully that buck disappeared. Yeah. Because it wasn't meant to be. Yeah. There was several bucks in that area with a couple of does. He's a decent buck. It was a pretty nice buck, but it wasn't the three. It, it wasn't, wasn't the three. Heart wasn't all into it. I knew you were asking me questions about like if I would take it and all this kind of stuff. I ask him that every year. I asked him <laughs> that this last year. I asked him that yeah. the other year. I'm like, okay, but like you say this is a good buck, but would you take it? And then, and then I, <laughs> he's yeah. like, mm, mm. and I'm like, okay. I, I feel like it's her decision. She should make that call whether she wants it or not. I shouldn't have to talk her into it. So yeah, but if you've seen the deer that he's gotten, like. It's, there's a little bit of a standard, I feel. Mm, a little a bit. standard. I like that. I live up to a little bit of a standard. <laughs> should always be a standard. I mean, you know, like, she's going for a bigger buck every year. That's just how, this is how it works. This is how it works with us, for most, for most of us anyway. I know when I was her age hunting, it was like, I got lucky. My very first buck was a four point. Um, and my very next buck was a spike. And so I didn't go the right direction, but that was okay. I think we all try to just graduate and try to look for a more mature animal every year. And that's what this big three was representing. That's what we wanted uh, to get this, to really cap it off on this third year. Because the worry was this buck, he's not going to live forever. You know, he's not going to be there forever. There's a lot of coyotes in this area. It has some hard winters. Um, you know, CWD is a thing. You just never know. And so... This was the year we had to get it done. And um, if you saw the film, you probably know um, my comfort level was much different with this one. You know, I didn't, I didn't worry about, like when we finally found this buck and we got this thing bedded on this nice little lower end of this sandstone with kind of a rock in front of it, you know, it's in a great spot. And it's, it's still a tough shot. You know, again, we're 300, were we 300 yards on this we one? We were like three, three, I think we were 350. 350 on this one. Was it? Or yeah. three? No, it was 350. 350? Yeah, around that, something okay. like that. 300, 350, that range. Yeah, so again, not a, not a super close shot, but this time this buck is bedded. And we have all day, you know, and he's got his does and he's just kind of chilling in the sun. And um, we get set up and I'm not worried anymore about the, needing this buck to stand up to give us that that picture perfect broadside shot i'm confident in her i've seen her confidence she doesn't miss so my goal wasn't to wait this buck out i wasn't going to sit there for an hour and a half two hours like we did that first deer um just freezing to death this one was let's get on the deer let's get very comfortable relax take your time pull through the shot, make the shot. Yep. And just like I thought was gonna happen, she settled in on it and really focused, took her time. I did a lot of coaching on this one to just make sure she was settled. And in the end, she um, made a perfect shot. Yeah. And just absolutely stoned this deer. It was 
so cool to watch. And uh, I don't know. I don't know how it can get any better than that. You know, after three years, the saga was over of, of trying to get this, this big three. And, and we had did it. Like, we had just accomplished everything. Yeah. And it was my first buck that I had shot bedded. Bedded. Yeah. So now you've taken a broadside shot. You've taken a hard quartering two shot. And now a bedded buck. Yep. And again, it was one of those, you know, my, my best way of describing it to her was right in the middle, like middle to middle. This buck was quartered away a little bit, but bedded. And, you know, it can be really tough if you don't know exactly how to pick up that shoulder. You know where that shoulder sits. And, you know, she couldn't have placed that bullet any better. And that deer was dead instantaneously. So, um, yeah, I mean, couldn't have been any any happier as a dad watching watching their kid uh, accomplish this goal so yeah and this one had you me and Kayam yeah it was like the groups of downsized it went from five to went from five to four to three yep yep and then after that uh Kayam and I got to do our hunting and we both took bucks Kayam took his very first buck on that trip and we uh we got to haul three mule deer out with the llamas and by that time the weather had continued to warm up snow was starting to melt at this point but we got that um well we got another night hike out i don't want to like brush past that we got that night hike out after you took your buck we went and got mine now it's late like we're breaking down my buck in the dark yeah. and then then we'd come back kaim bombed back to get the llamas all the way back to base camp yeah. He brought those back to us. Um, yeah, I we had left my deer over where we had shot it after we broke it down. And then you went and shot yours. We went yeah. and got your deer. I packed half of it out. You packed the other half. And then we went and got my deer. And then yeah. we met up with him with the yeah. llamas. Kaim showed up to save the day with the llamas. And we did a nice little night hike back through the deep snow and uh got back to our base camp that night that was a long long day but um wouldn't have wanted it any other way something about those night hikes all three of her deer have been night hikes out uh your second one was a night hike um and then that last one was a night hike yeah so now just perfect that's how we want them to go so um that's kind of the uh the rundown that's that's the recap of her first three deer and you know we're already looking forward to showing uh this last year this last trip she had a really good season this year and yeah i did and it went really well um, yeah the weather was really nice this year we had incredible weather it was really almost too easy it almost felt like we were cheating with the weather how, how nice it was no uh no minus temps to deal with but um but we had goats so we're on to uh to a whole nether adventure with these goats and so that's going to be an upcoming film that we show so um, that's it. That's kind of all we have to say about the, the, uh, the three parts, the three deer, the three years of deer uh, with Paley. And um, looking forward to showing you some more. Okay, so everybody who has uh, kept with us through this recap video, uh, we had a giveaway with our last film with Paley's Big Three. And that giveaway was for a Tricer tripod of their choice <laughs> this is the bc this is the one i use when i'm like parking on a ridge sitting down they also have one that's called an ad much bigger for guys like brian call that like to stand up while they're glassing and not just sit uh maybe think about the ad it's just a little bit heavier but these are sub two pound spotting or uh tripods for your spotter so really good stuff and then also we're throwing in one of our new glassing pads on there. You can see it's a little bit different than the ones we've done in the past. I've been using this one a lot. Folds up, fits it to the back of your pack, and that's it. We have these on the site now, but um, yeah, Lucky Winner's gonna win both of those. Here, I'm gonna just pick a YouTube, <laughs> pick a YouTube comment, oh God, I'll hold there's those. There's so many comments. I know, oh, there's like so many people commented. a ton of comments on here. I don't even here, know so. how you pick. You gotta randomly do it. Yeah. 
got it. Pick that one. Who's it from? Okay, we're going to really show my age here. Right. James Farmer, so. James Farmer 3058. Yep. Another great video. There's nothing better than knowing you've raised your children not to be a bunch of softies like so many are today. <laughs> I Boom, really appreciated how you coached your daughter through the shot and built her confidence back up, telling her you can make this shot 100 times out of 100. You could sense the doubt, leave her, and the determination come back, and she said, yeah, I can. And then she did. Thumbs up, fist bump, double fist bump. <laughs> Congratulations all the way around to all involved. Keep up the good work and God bless. Smiley face. Sweet. Yeah, wow. we had a ton of really, really good comments on this one. It was really cool to hear. I think there's a lot of parents out there that really Yeah, uh, I mean, really the comments it. are really so many fathers crazy. I'm sure there were mothers there too. I'd, I have not read all the comments. Ryan really kept up on the comments, but it's pretty amazing how it touched a lot of people. Yeah. You know, I realize there's a lot that, that it like they've had kids that have hunted with them and they've long moved away since there's a lot of people that are currently hunting with their kids and, um, they're in the process that we're in right now with ours. And then there's a lot of Man, there's kids like in the womb. They're, they're, they're coming and they're on their way. <laughs> there's a lot of pressure uh, and, going uh, on these poor kids that haven't even been and born. And people are like looking forward to taking their kids out hunting, and uh, I don't blame them. Um, but a lot of a lot of that, I saw a lot of that in the comments. It was really cool to see. So it was James. James Garden. Gar Garden. Farmer. James Farmer. Farmer. Some gardening farmer. All right, James Farmer. Um, um, we will. You, you need to send us. Yeah, you need to, how do we do this? <sighs> Should I give out your phone number? No. <laughs> what? Oh, get a hold of us, James Farmer. Call, James Farmer. Um. <laughs> uh, email? Let's start back, let's go back. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> do I got your? Reflexes. Are your reflexes good? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. Uh, James Farmer, you got lucky today, so you can drop us an email at info at Stealthy Hunter, and we will send you your free gifts. Price your tripod, Stealthy Glassing Pad. Yeah. Yep. All right. Any parting it. words? I appreciate everybody for sticking with us through this little recap. It's kind of different for us, so. Yeah, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Okay. See ya. <laughs>